Another week where you get mad at my opinion about the most recent episodes for fall 2024. This is a list of animes and yes, Ari Furata aired yesterday on Monday, but the cutoff is like Sunday for me, right? We end with like Tower of God and the other animes that ends on like Sunday. So we're just going to be covering the most recent episodes, okay? So we'll put Ari Furata down here. First up. Let's talk about Goodbye Dragon Life. So last week, where did we place this? It was on mid, right? And I think that last episode, it was pretty much mid. The animation quality was all right, right? But that shouldn't be like, like, like decent animation should not be the standard of like whether an anime is actually good. What about the actual story? Well, a Lamia girl, the dragon guy got reincarnated, new village was kind of slitting down and a little bit of funny like fan service moments. But aside from that, it was, yeah, it was mid, but the second episode, the second episode, I feel like it should be good, if not great. I actually did kind of feel for the Lamia getting like bullied because like the Baldi was like, hey, even though you say my kid, you're still evil. No, you're not allowed here. And then there was a bunch of things that we had to do. Eventually, <laughs> we had to have our goddess friend kind of bail us out. I think it was pretty, pretty much implied that Doran back in the day dragon friend with the goddess the goddess fucking talks to this ch schizo church girl and the church girl's like yeah, yes it's gonna be fine so it's all right it, it honestly was an enjoyable episode i think that maybe it should be great but i i actually found it a lot better I, i'm glad that it was better and fresh milk <laughs> yeah of course the fresh milk i'm sure everybody's just gonna remember this for fresh milk drinking the cowgirl's milk and it's pretty much um confirmed at this point that guy, Baran, the bald dude who was opposed into Lamia joining, his wife is the cowgirl, and the entire town drinks his wife's fresh milk on a daily basis. Now, if that's not some lexable cuckoldry, I have no clue what it is. Okay, next up. Um, hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm not gonna drop it. I'm not gonna drop Blue Lock. It's, it's weird. So like, let me explain to you the logic of why I think it's mid. I think that the art is phenomenal. In fact, we currently have, a, we're gonna make another Blue Lock video. I, I, I got some Blue Lock videos, don't worry. I, I, I have some drama that we're gonna farm, don't worry. We're, we're gonna get on that. You'll see that in a separate video. But the episode itself was honestly hype. It was. And even though the animation is not animating, I had fun watching it. Now, I'm not going to sit here and protect that, like, the studio from all criticism and say, Oh, you're haters if you're saying this is bad. No, this is fucking garbage. This is a manga reaction. And in fact, me even saying it's a manga reaction is disrespectful to not blue lock the anime, but blue lock the manga. It is a tragedy what 8-Bit Studios is doing right now. And... In terms of like overall enjoyment, like I, I feel like it should be here. Like I actually had a lot of fun. Even if the shit ain't moving, it looks kind of pretty in an individual frame by frame basis. And I, I, I enjoy the hype moments, but like I can't in my good conscience put this. I'm going to I'm going to criticize it even harder, right? I had a lot of fun watching it, but man, the animation is not animating. It's just fucking everything is sliding each single frame. It's, it's like, um, how do I explain this? It's almost like a mobile game? Like an NV? It's it's weird where like the panel has so much life but nothing moves and it's just voice acting. It's basically a colored voiceover manga. Now, the uh, hope right now is they are allocating their budget in a smart way to min-max on the low priority episodes and go crazy for the U20, right? Like, like we are, I'm still gonna sniff the copium, right? If you don't sniff the copium, you're just a fucking doomer. And you're just gonna have a negative outlook your entire life. Me, this is how I approach it. I'm gonna hope for the best. But I know <laughs> life is not like that. So I'm in the back of my mind, I'm already pretty much set on blocks gonna be garbage for the rest of the season. I'm gonna bank on the the, the possibility that maybe U20 it turn up. If it doesn't, hey, we can still have fun reacting to it. We'll just be laughing at the anime. And I think those reactions are honestly even more fun. Next up, let's talk about... This anime. 
So not, remember, not the most recent episode, but like last week's episode, right? That when I say most recent, we're making this on Monday. I, I know the Monday episode already aired, but I'm not talking about that episode. This is the episode where we basically concluded the prologue, right? We conclude the prologue. Walter realizes that he's too kind of a heart. <laughs> it's actually crazy Walter character development. Walter was some meathead chud that I thought did not matter, was a belligerent barbarian, and went off to be like one of the most like, not complex, but a quite well fleshed out character that I could feel for. Like this brute actually was kind inside and he was a soft and he couldn't handle, you know, this brutality that is living in, you know, different parties and clans and trying to move up in the world of adventurers, right? Um, he's a proponent of true gender equality too. Smacked his shit out of that girl. And the best thing is, the girl, bro, the girl was in love with the guy. Our main character. That's the funny shit. And, oh, man. And then we snapped at her. That was actually so good. The, um, the zesty slave trader guy, <laughs> voiced by Dio's voice actor, he was hella fun too, right? He's just like talking all cutesy when everything is fine. And as soon as we're like pressing harder in the negotiations and making an unfair like deal, his voice starts basically not, you know, clown and pretty voice, but more like, hey, hey, stop it. Hey, <laughs> like, what the? It, it was actually such a funny episode to me. Um, I think there's a huge potential for this anime to be great. And I'm going to place it on great for now. Next up. Our first peak, and you're going to call me crazy, and I think I'm crazy, but again, this is based off of my personal enjoyment and preferences, right? I think Damachi straight up was peak. Bro, I have not laughed out hard in an anime episode in a while. From the trailer, I already knew I was going to die laughing based on how Head On was like <laughs> making Bell do 20 reps of like bouquet flowers. Bro. Even though no one's watching Damachi, last episode for me, specifically, I love that shit. Peak, slice of life, Damachi. It's about time, too, we got some slice of life because, like, all throughout season four, and I know there's been many years since, like, you know, season four conclusion, season four was so heavy. Season three also was so fucking heavy. And this episode in season five reminded me that, oh, Damachi, bro. I remember the vibes it used to have like this. Does the funny slice of life moments. Like truly, like it's really fun. If you kind of like love this setting, this whole story. I, that's why like, even if it performs bad and yeah, it's performing pretty bad. I'm going to keep this one around. I will personally take an L out of my own pocket just to watch this show. Cause I love it so much. Next up. Let's talk about Tower of God. Uh. Uh, where did Tower of God go? Mm. Here's the thing. Remember. Um. I. Th there are some shows, such as Blue Lock. Like, like I have no expectations for this show. You know, like I, I, I do not give a fuck about this show. So that's why I'm just going in, and even though things might be mid, I'm, I'm still having fun. Tower of God and Blue Lock is different, where it's like. I love the series so much, and it hurts me to see such a poor adaptation. And what kind of hurts me is, I thought that, bro, we're, we're in the workshop battle. What happened? I thought the budget's gonna increase. I thought, I thought Bandai Namco took over, bro. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. Y'all got fucking catfished. What, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Here's the next level of cope. We're not technically doing the workshop battles are we right this this is <laughs> set up we're trying to get onto the fucking ship and then the tournament begins <laughs> so maybe <laughs> we, we need to let it cook a little bro how long are we gonna wait we're 15 episodes deep how long are we gonna oh my fucking god dude like oh it's like the fight scenes it's getting better, right? If you come again, I, I think one of the most fucked up things is their first introduction of Quatro and how he fought Viol. And it was again, like a VTuber, PNG VTuber just swinging back and forth. That was the extent of the limit, like the animation. Now, compared to that, yeah, it's getting a little bit better. And I think there has been moments where 
people such as Rachel are honestly Rachel is hard carrying even if you hate her you cannot deny that you feel this way because of Rachel from season one like that's a good thing even if you're mad she's doing her job and then there's like other old characters coming back and Doris the Anak, right yeah it's nice and when there's no fights and it's all dialogue everyone's having a fun time we're back to season one vibes the gang is all back we're about to reunite and it's conversations and that's what we love about Tower of God but the fight scenes man oh my fucking god Ugh, ugh. Even though I feel like um they should all be here together, for whatever reason, I just feel like putting it here because I expect more from these two. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard to explain why this is higher up, but the root cause is I expect better from you fucking idiots. What happened, you know? This... It's a random season that we're checking out. No one's going to remember this shit when it's over. And it was a fun watch. But these two, it's just like... <sighs> it hurts me. It hurts me. It's coming from a place of love. Next up. Hmm. Let's talk about Loner Life. I think Loner Life is pretty fucking good. Uh, is it great? I'm not sure. It was pretty funny. No, the more that I think about it, may, may, maybe I'm glazing a bit too hard. But like last episode, may, may, maybe it should be like this. I, I, I liked how like um, the, the press came back and sh we, we shit on her for being a pretty poor leader, in my opinion. I think that's still true, but she's getting better. She's getting better. And we're going to know all the different girls and they're... It might be annoying, but they came over and now they're training and the girls don't know how to do isekai at all and all the gals, the gal leader fucking fled. That shit was pretty funny to me. And the kobold, they're all just like jeering them on and having fun and smacking their asses and, and taunting. And then we, we don't kill them, right? They go flying off like Team Rocket. The whole vibes, the whole vibes is so good. And yes, the um little bit slow airhead girl that showed up to the tent, she was really nice. I, I... I enjoyed it a lot. Maybe it should be here, but I'm going to place it here for now. But I still think there was quite a big gap in the amount that I enjoyed between Dragon Life and this anime. We'll see how this all recalibrates later on. Next up. Hmm. Let's talk about Orb. Orb is actually kind of crazy. It is also a tragedy that many people are not seeking out this content in the North American or global speaking audience. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of people checking out Orb from abroad, specifically Japan. And this rarely happens and I'll go, I'll go over this in the performance review, but I'll give you a little, little sneak peek of what's happening. It's just a little sneak peek, okay? Uh, let me find out Orb here. Let's see the episode. Let's bring up the analytics. Here it is. So. What I want you to focus on is this trajectory of the graph, because in the beginning, here's the thing in the beginning, the first couple hours, it's always going to perform really poor or like very like minimum, because this is all the efforts of my audience, because like I, it's hard to sell this type of setting in the show to an audience that only enjoys, you know, Battle fantasy, sorry, <laughs> a power fantasy, isekai, rom-com, harem shit. It's a totally different show. But you'll see that at a certain point, you, you see the typical in this period goes from, you see the um, actual views kind of start to eclipse that. And at some point, it just now performs way higher. Why is that? Because it's a totally separate audience. A brand new audience is showing up for this shit. And they're all from Japan. This is extremely rare. This never fucking happens and this is what i'm fishing for quite a lot actually um i'll give you two examples right i'll give you a perfect example of an anime that is just you know just our shit and an anime where it's just like completely getting to a different audience if you look at our community series right they perform very well why is that because i know who my audience is and i asked you guys what you want to watch and even though there's no new people coming in it's all returning viewers it's perfectly fine look at the sub viewership right it's not ideal, but the purpose of these shows is to satisfy the existing audience and the returning viewers. And this is basically how this looks like pretty much for most other reactions. But then sometimes there's a magical moment where even if my audience may not enjoy it, 
there's a whole separate audience looking for it. There exists a demand. A demand exists, yet it's all from Japan, right? And wow, look at the age group, bro. That is 7.8% of 55 to 64 year old people. That's fucking crazy. Like that is like this kind of graph will never happen again, man. And it truly shows that like Japan. So you know how you guys are a bunch of weebs? I think that this is basically the opposite of a weeb where instead of Western people glazing Eastern culture, it's Eastern people <laughs> glazing Western culture. That is exactly what's happening here. A lot of the Japanese people, dude, they love this shit. Genuinely. A lot of Japanese, a lot of Eastern people, they're obsessed with gun culture. They're obsessed with random American cartoons. They truly, they are. And the number, I'm not even like, this is me interpreting the numbers. I'm not even making shit up. Look where it's coming from. Japan loves this shit. You ever wonder why an Attack on Titan? Every like, you ever wonder like, not just like Attack on Titan, so many anime shit. Like, there's a lot of random German happening. You know? Well, like, like, like Japan glazes European culture, in my opinion. I think that some of them definitely do. They, they definitely do. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just trying to explain to you where the fuck are these people coming from, right? And here's the thing. These people have no clue what they're watching. <laughs> There's no Japanese subs. <laughs> the engagement's gonna be pretty poor. I, 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 it, it's, I, it should be way lower because these people are not watching me for my commentary. They're watching me based, based on my physical reaction. Like, like, oh, something crazy happened. <laughs> they don't understand, right? So, like, the really smart thing to do in situations like this is... You do this. You do this. Anytime you see Joe's title have Japanese sub, uh, Japanese in it, it's got AI subs. Let's, got, let's look at it. Let's click this, right? And then... What the fuck is Bali doing, bro? Is that Uzumaki reference? Maybe. But if you can look at the subs here, right? You can look at the subs and you'll notice that um there actually is uh Japanese subs. I think there is. Where's the subs? Auto generate options. Auto translate? Usually he has it built in. Maybe this is a bad example, but Joe and I have specifically talked about this where it's like. This is the same thing for Elusive Samurai. It's the same thing for um, Oshinoku. And it's the same thing for these shows where if there's a Japanese audience, you put in Japanese subtitles and it'll do well. But here's the problem. You know how I often talk about how important it is to maintain a focus? You know how I talk about how it's so important to maintain a focus in the subs you have? Fragmenting your audience is a very dangerous thing and if you can do it in a controlled way where basically you're making so much videos such as myself right where i am horizontally investing in so many different topics but in a controlled way it's not random videos going up it has to do with the interest of my channel and i'm juggling a lot of different audiences right now but this specific japanese audience showing up they're not what are they gonna watch after you know what i mean and Let's for, let's for the sake of argument, let's say, let, let's say they might stick around. Like, these people are most likely not going to watch the other reactions. They only care about this one thing. And then if you think about further beyond that, let's say Patreon, there's no Japanese subs there. You have to build that shit in, into the video. It's so much like technical overhead and investments and something that I definitely am not trying to lean into. Like, if I really wanted to captivate on the Japanese market, I do what Joe's doing, but I'm planning things differently. And this isn't to say what Joe's doing is wrong. He has a plan. He's executing his plan. That's fantastic. It's just that I have a different plan. And I don't think that catering towards a foreign audience because a specific show popped off is the best thing I'm intention. I'm going to still watch it. I'm going to still watch it. But just be aware of like what kind of different audiences that you bring in. But regardless, this should peak. This shit was fucking peak. Next up. Let's talk about Appraisal Isekai. Appraisal Isekai is pretty good, but it's kind of getting dangerous 
in the realm of like, should we drop it or not? I want to watch the war. It's a season two. It's a relatively unknown isekai. It, season one was barely hanging on back when we were covering it. And now we're in season two territory. More people got filtered out and we'll, we'll, we'll give it a couple more episodes. It, it's gen But it hurts me because like it's a, it's a pretty good show. It's a well thought out comprehensive show. And I don't see garbage CGI ruining it. I don't see a lack of like, you know, love for it. I, I think that it's honestly like, like a seven. It's like a, just like a straight seven out of 10. And that's pretty impressive in my opinion. I just wish that more people recognize this show, but it is what it is. Next. Yo, what the fuck is happening with this show? Is this mid or good? Half the time, the only time I'm laughing is when the princes are diddling with a girl that's five years younger and trying to court them. <laughs> I don't know where they're going with this. I think that um, the most recent episode, what did it do? It introduced us to, you know, this important unk who got exiled because he was too good and it kind of establishes the corruption that exists in the nobility. Our character is getting older, <laughs> slowly but surely, getting stronger, becoming more aware of the world, trying to be more of a villainess, but everything she does, honestly, is pretty honorable and respectful and something a villainess wouldn't do. But it's the attitude, right? It's the attitude on the way that she goes about things. It's, yeah, it's it's barely good. It, it, it feels like it should be kind of like, eh or eh? Eh or eh? Eh or eh? Eh or eh? Uh. The more I stare at this, the more I, I, it's blue luck should be higher. But again, I'm just mad. I'm, I'm just fucking mad. And I don't want to give good fucking ratings to this garbage studio. That's like, you know, getting away with the min maxing. So you're going to stay down here. Even if I don't feel that same way. Um, I'll put it here for now. Next up. I think this is mid. I, I think this is. Oh, so mid. <laughs> I don't know why we're watching this. I mean, the whole premise is interesting, right? It's about getting kicked out of the party and maybe a vengeance plot happening. And it's cooking, right? Even if it's not going to be a vengeance plot, there's like a moment where we can kind of like save these dumbass quote unquote hero party and have a good moment out of it. But like, oh man. Oh man, this shit's so fucking mid. Oh man. <laughs> Truly, like, it feels like a new gate, you know? It, 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 it feels like a new gate, where it's like the definition of mid. It's just like, eh, eh. I, I, I want to check out one more episode. I, the, the, the stupid party is going to the Hydra. They're going to do some stupid shit. I'm sure we're going to bail them out. Maybe next episode's going to be funny, but it's, oh man, it's, oh, <laughs> it's so mid. <laughs> next up. All right. Let's talk about Don Don. I think that Don Don is definitely peak. Don Don, I don't know how much they can keep up this gas to the fucking pedal movement going on right now. And in the first couple episodes, it's hype, right? Maybe there's gonna be downtimes. And last episode, like immediately we come home and like not even just the action, like the whole like relationship between Ayase and Okarun, it's beautiful. It's honestly so good. Even though there's little to no time being invested into it, setting them up. Because of the chemistry they have, this like, no give a fuck gal attitude versus a quote unquote shy, like uh, introvert that wants to reach out. It's something about, and they, they clash and they banter, and they yell at each other, but it's so good. It's so good. And then beyond that, the animation, the fight scenes, the sumo wrestler, oh my god, it's, 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 it's so, like, go watch an episode of Tower of God, or this, or, like, like, watch any of the animes here, fuck it, e e even these shows, right, even these shows, like, well, basically, watch anything here, that's below the great tier, you'll see a gap in difference of quality, it's truly animating, and if only, Every anime could have the standard that Dandadan Dan has. Has a standard that maybe Orb has. Even Bell. I mean, Damachi, right? JC staff, say what you will. They fucking polish their prized possession flagship product, which is Damachi, right? They fucking love this shit. It's so, so good. And 
we're getting to see more of like the transformations. He's like, his weenie is gone. I actually has to control, can constantly control him. And if not, he can go berserk. But if we can like kind of control, let go of like the physical part of it, he can like basically turn into this hybrid mode of Turbo Baba and him. Where his jaws are so fucking strong. He's just locked in, cutting shit up. It's it's so fun. The mysteries are interesting. Why are the aliens and the supernaturals, right? Both being warded off by these talismans. We need to meet the granny. We need to go get Turbo Baba. I feel like next episode is going to be even better, but like pretty good. Oh yeah, we should talk about Demon Lord 2099. You're right. Thanks for the call. We checked out a new anime, Demon Lord 2099. Is there actually any other anime that we haven't done? Hold up, hold up. Before we get to the next ones, let's see, let's see, let's see. I wish we were watching Bleach. Uh, remember, anyone reacting to fucking Shangri-La Frontier, they're gonna get copyright struck. Go tell them. Uh, that's pretty much it, I think. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yo, how the fuck is this anime still going? Yeah, where's Dragon Ball Daima actually at? Where's Dragon Ball Daima? I don't see it. Am I crazy? Do you guys see it? I see it. Here it is. Is there anything else? Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Mm, I think that's it. Yo, how is this anime still airing? Bro, there's a new video from Lunar Equinox <laughs> called... Bro. This is the funniest title. Uh, Lunar Equinox. His most recent video... <laughs> this is the worst anime of this season. And yo, how is this getting two cores right now? This shit's from last season. I remember the first day it aired, I was doing some research like, yo, should we check this out? Everybody off the of first episode was like, this is so fucking bad. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll steer away from it. But we're in, we're in fall now. This shit's been happening in the summer. It's two cores? They gave him two cores for this fucking garbage? That's pretty funny. But okay, let's, let's, let's focus. Let's focus. Where were we? We finished off this. Let's talk about... Honestly, Dragon Ball Daima. I thought Dragon Ball Daima was a great episode. The... Toriyama art style that I'm familiar with growing, watching Dragon Ball, it's there, man. It's there, man. It's so good. I think it's the nostalgia. I, I think that it's the nostalgia factor kicking in getting a recap of all the different significant moments throughout Dragon Ball to Z. It was so nice to be able to be reacting, like to be able to react when drag another Dragon Ball anime is coming out. Like when Dragon Ball Super was, was airing, I wasn't reacting, right? I missed out on that. But Daima is back and I'm like, oh man, like this is nice. It's really nostalgic. They, there's a lot of lore. It's not complicated. The world building isn't like super convoluted, but they gave us a pretty comprehensive, like, lore drop of, like, this is a demon world, you know? This is where King Dabra used to be from. We got a new dude. It's King Goma. And he's just a short, stupid idiot like the other, you know, short, uh, evil dudes in this show. They all probably want to wish to be taller, right? And they got their own Dragon Balls, but they can't use theirs because they have a bunch of super, like, robots that a Namekian from their side made. Well, they got to come over to our side and... You know, they're scared of the Z-Warriors attacking us, even though we never would. And now, they made everyone to kids, and it's, it's a fun, it's a fun start. It's a fun start. The quality was there, for sure. I think that it definitely deserves a great tier. I think that it's definitely, like, leagues ahead of these shows, in terms of quality, at the very least. Even if the plot's not super deep, in terms of entertainment value, very fun. Next up, let's talk about Demon Lord 99. I feel like it should be at the top of good, if not great. Bro, I'm not gonna lie. At the end of the episode... <laughs> when the demon lord... Walked back to the building where his girl is staying and he thought that the whole building was his. But it turns out we're renting a... A studio apartment. And then he's like, oh... I see. This is how much you've been suffering. And then the girl's crying, and he's, dude, it's, the, it's so sad, but that's the fun, like, I, it, it, that match you, I laughed really hard, for sure, yeah, Demon Lord, I laughed really hard, I wanna put it up here, bro, I wanna put it up here, it was actually so fucking funny, dude, 
I, yeah, I, I think they were definitely trying to make it funny. There, there is no way they were not trying to make that shit funny. I think that's such a relatable experience for a lot of people just graduating or have graduated and have been in the workforce for a couple of years, right? It's just the whole setup is very interesting too, right? We're sent into the future. He's reincarnated, five hundred years, maybe not reincarnated, resurrected somehow, right? And the hero seems to be still around. Our one of the one of our like most elite soldiers, right? That dude just sold us out and he is basically ruling the cyberpunk city and we're just so out of meta that our great powers in the past don't do shit anymore with this familia, you know, chip that they have. Got to meet the hacker girl, got to meet some other people that introduced us to the building. Uh, sorry, where the, where the bad guy is. The girl, the secretary is super funny. She seems she's very, very serious. But she talks about random goofy shit, which is the gap moe, the contrast between those personality uh, traits. That's like the funniest thing to me. And overall, just the whole vibe seems pretty interesting. And we'll see. Like, like obviously from the cover picture, it's looking like my man is gonna be a gamer. Like he's gonna not beat this guy through brute force, but maybe he'll out capitalism him. I don't know. It's gonna be a pretty unique show. So. I really enjoyed episode one. If you guys haven't checked it out, go check it out. Maybe we're getting catfish, but you know, first episode was pretty good. Next up. Made is top of good or great? It's um for sure the polish is there, but I am low-key getting a bit tired of mentally ill girl with a lot of trauma constantly needing affirmations. <laughs> That, that'd be, that's going to be the next 10 episodes. That, that's, the, that's the premise of the show. Was it great or good? Mm. It, it just felt like the continuation of the first episode. It's a, good, it's a good episode. But I don't think it really stood out to me like D3 did though. There wasn't like a specific moment where I was just like... It really stood out. The name Snow, right? I get it. The assassin name Sue was also Snow, supposed to be cold, and we did this mental gymnastics of how Snow for her, actually Yuki means like warm, yeah, yeah I understand, and it's, it's it's supposed to be this beautiful, wholesome moment, but like, damn, bro, they're, they're really, they're, they're, they're re <laughs> they are really exploiting mental illnesses and traumas of people to prop up this <laughs> now, Th that's one perspective you can think of, right? You can think that like they are exploiting uh, these issues and you shouldn't mock others and, you know, take advantage of these people that truly live with these traumas. Or you can see it in the way of representation. That there isn't many animes willing to talk about stuff like this, but who am I to judge others who may even have the same experience suddenly watching this and feeling like, their world is changing. You know, like, like I, I don't know. To me, it's just a little funny that basically your waifu is just basically the moral of the story is just get lucky with the mentally ill trauma dumping waifu and everything will be good. Next episode. Let's see. Blue box. That was good. Eh. It's good. Was there a moment that I thought it was fucking amazing or great? We're getting situated with the girl. There's some cute little jealousy maybe happening. Maybe not even jealousy, misunderstandings, right? The Hina, Chinatsu and Hina, right? Hina, the pink girl, even though she acts aloof and doesn't seem to outwardly show her affection for the guy, it's a triangle. It's a fucking triangle. <laughs> I thought there wouldn't be a triangle, but last episode, some there's a, there's a lot of frames where she has these look of doubts. <laughs> It's a triangle. It's a good episode. It's a good episode. Let's keep letting it cook. Strange grief. This too I thought was... Was it great or was it good? I was honestly kind of mad during the episode, right? I was mad at Tino and how delusional she was. And constantly put her teammates in danger. And that part felt like, fuck, this girl's annoying. It's not funny anymore. But then it's like, actually, 
there is this a aspect of the other people kind of choosing safety over progress. If you're always limiting yourself, getting comfortable, you can't really surpass your limits. You got to push forward. Was this the right place to do such a thing? I'm not sure, but it turned out that Tino wasn't wrong after all. And the wolf faces, the spirit gun. I, I, I did like the spirit gun pose, bro. The spirit gun pose is very unique. I've never seen a pinky ring spirit gun before. Could I show up? This dumbass just uses his fucking... His, his slime didn't even exist, right? There's nothing in the vial, it seems like. Or maybe something happened. We don't know just yet. His spirit guns, it, it's all stall flashed. And the wolves are like, what the fuck just happened? Uh, what else is there? There's also... The people that we haven't saved yet. But we're on a rescue mission and they... It's just... Eh. I, 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 I think that it should be top of good for now. And maybe I'll put this here. Maybe I'll put this here. Let's some shuffle. Let's shuffle some animes. This is all right. Yeah, I th I, I'm happy with this order. I feel like I should probably put this here. Probably should put like this, like here. Yeah, that's a little bit more cleaner. Here, I think it's about right. Here, I think this is also about right. Now, we got this dumbass fucking isekai, dude. I can't believe people are still every day talking about this show. Incel isekai. Bro, who watches this garbage? Who who watches this garbage, bro? <laughs> Are you for that to truly? Did, like, like, you, you think that this is the pinnacle of season three? R isekai this season? No, bro. It's Are you for that to baby? <laughs> nah. You know where it's going. That's right. Reezer is going to the top of the fucking list. Why? Because it's just that good. I don't have to say it. The product speaks for itself. Each episode is just so fucking rich with everything I could ever want on Isekai. It just, it just fits my bias so well, right? On top of it being probably an amazing, well-written show, I think that people definitely... I think the author tries harder than most other authors. On top of that, there's this, like, affinity, this, like, match-making affinity of all the themes that the show's about and what I enjoy in the storytelling. So, like, yeah, I love it. What was happening last episode? Reinhard failed. Did he fail? You could say he failed. He didn't lose, but if the mission was to save everybody, then he did fail. Got to learn a little bit more about uh, Sirius's authority. Rather than being direct, you know, having her attention, it's more of, like, recognizing her presence in your soul, kind of. Um... R completely random fact. You know how um, the boy was, you know, basically the hostage and there's another girl? The girl seemed to appear out of nowhere apparently in the anime. But like, apparently she was being hidden under like Sirius's robes. A complete random fact. I don't know why I mentioned it just now. Yeah, Subaru pissing his pants was nice, I guess. <laughs> okay. Um, Amelia dual wielding. Amelia dual wielding? Bro. I love... This new Amelia without Puck. She doesn't just sit back, just go like this, and then icicles attack. Even though in season one, episode 23, the most tragic heroic death run for Subaru, that Amelia saving people in Arlan Village against the fingers, that animation went crazy. I, that, that was cool. But, but, the fucking, oh, the dual wielding, the nunchucks, the claws, the spear, the lance. She switched like maybe 10 separate weapons, man. And then... Regular showing up. <sighs> Peak fucking cinema. It's only gonna keep getting better and better. And the craziest thing is last episode, man. Not even priority episode. Just think about that for a second. It's not even priority episode just yet. So, like, we're already getting fed so well. Oh, my fucking God. I just can't believe we're already entering third week of ReZero tomorrow, man. And remember, we only have eight episodes. We only have eight episodes, man. And then we have to wait till February for the counter-attack arc, which is going to be the the other half of arc 5, right? And then we go into arc 6, which is going to be something like uh, 16, 22 episodes, something like that. But, man, I, I was thinking about this tonight. I was like, shit, Reaser is already episode 3 tomorrow. That's basically rounded up, and you're halfway done through the quote-unquote season, if the season is the 8 episodes that we're getting in October, right? But... It is what it is. Let's just cherish what we have in the in the meantime. But I think that this is pretty much how I feel about this week's anime. And remember, I'm criticizing these shows way harder than 
It should be because these animes, I have no fucking expectations. I don't like, it easily. I had more fun watching Blue Lock and probably Tower of God than some of these other animes, right? But I expect more. I expect more from these shows and it just feels wrong to place them up. It feels like I need to actively talk and speak out. Because most people just fucking glaze and just silently listen. And then as soon as someone criticizes, they're like, Why are you hating this show? Oh, don't worry. We, we got a separate video that we're going to farm for that shit. But hey, that's this week's worth of tier list. If you're mad about this, I don't know what to tell you, bro. You got to be the biggest fucking loser. Getting mad at a completely random person's opinion. Watching fucking children's cartoons. Go get a fucking job.